Hey guys, Clavif here, and today I have a smooth kind of uh, interpolation camera rotation in one singular command right here, one repeating command, and you can see that it converges to 90 and 0 degrees, I can change those numbers, uh, but it does it very smoothly here, very slowly, and you can adjust the speed um, and what angle it rotates to. Uh, so you may be wondering, how the hell did I come across this? It was actually pretty simple, so uh, it uses vector math, and I'm just going to say right off the bat, there's a couple different ways to do this effect. Uh, you can use real kind of math equations and scoreboards, and then put the rotation back on. Uh, they all have their upsides and downsides. This one, though, is pretty amazing because it's very simple. It's a very short command, um, and it kind of uses, uh, in order for it to work, it uses some logic about, like, uh, iterative processes. Uh, so I have a lot of different ways to show you how and why this works. So let's go through the first one. So this orange is the angle that you want to make the player face. And this blue is the angle that the player is currently at. So the process is simple. Step one, you add the two vectors together, okay? And to do so, you take the tail of the blue and put it at the tip of the orange. And then you draw a line going from the tip of the blue back to your origin point in the center. And this new vector, once you flip it, will be the vector that is the sum of the two. However, uh, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to have a enforced scale to that vector. So we're just going to go ahead and stretch it out so it's the same length as our original blue vector. So let's go through this process again. You add two vectors together. It creates a triangle. The uh, third angle, which is your added, uh, the addition of the two vectors, becomes your new blue vector. Okay, so you can already see the process starting to work. So we started very obtuse, and now we are fairly acute. So we're going to go through another iterative step. So we're going to take the blue, add it to the orange, draw a line back to the origin, flip the line around, scale it down so that it is the same as the original blue vector. So it has a constant scaling factor. Okay, so then again, we're going to add them, we're going to draw the line, we're going to flip it around, and we're going to scale it. And you can see after doing this quite a few times, the angle becomes more and more acute. So as this approaches infinity, you will approach the same orientation. So I have a MATLAB uh, Desmos kind of uh, example for you. Uh, and this will be linked in the description if you want to play around with it. It doesn't work perfectly. I don't, I'm not a pro with Desmos, but it works in Minecraft perfectly. So just assume that. But this only works like within a certain angle. So red is our desired. Blue is our initial. And each blue along the way is kind of like where we go through this multiple iterations. So you can see it jumps a lot, then a little, then a little, then a little. Uh, this kind of process, I think, has been referred to as uh, angle averaging. Um, so you're really going to, when you do this process, you're going to end up with kind of like the angle that is uh, the midway between these two vectors. Of course, we can control the distance of these vectors, right? So we can control the magnitude of uh, the desired vector to increase or reduce the jumps that it takes. So here you can see it takes a lot less jumps. So it would take more iterations to converge. But if we increase the magnitude of this vector, it would take less time to converge. Okay, and uh, they kind of are a ratio, so you can also change Q, which is the magnitude of the blue vectors. And again, if you uh, increase this, it takes longer to converge. If you decrease this, it takes less time to converge. Obviously, you can't be less than zero. Uh, so we can go ahead and mess with the starting angle here, and you can see that if you're already close, then it doesn't take much more to get there. But if you're pretty far, it's going to take a lot more iterations to get there. Uh, so that's kind of the visual representation. So how do we do this in Minecraft? So what we have to do is we have to do these three steps. So we have to add two vectors, get the resulting uh, addition of the two vectors, so the resulting angle, which points to the origin, and then we need to flip it around. Okay, so that's actually really simple because Minecraft Execute has these things inherent. Okay, so we're going to do it with this guy. So we're going to use this guy to tell us what our desired angle is, so 90.0 and 0. So then we're going to create a command for this. So we're going to go rotated as that guy. So we're going to face the orange. Okay, so this is setting up, we create the orange. This is this stage. Now we need to go do the orange vector. Then we need to add the blue vector to it, which is actually really simple. So we're going to go positioned 
five. So that creates our orange vector. Uh, think of it in your head. I mean, we're actually going to the tip of this vector, right? Because we move forward five. Then we're going to do rotated as at S. So this gives us the original angle of this blue vector. And we're going to go to the tip of that blue vector. So positioned five. So this takes us to the tip of the blue vector. This is going to be kind of our tip to tail method. And now we need to get the resulting angle pointing back at the origin. Well, the origin is me pointing back to me. What does that sound like you're doing? You're going to face entity at S eyes. So this will face back to me. And that will give us the direction for our vector going back to me. And now we need to flop, swap this side. We need to move it back to where I am so that it originates from me, the vector and we need to flop the rotation. So we're going to flop it first. So if we face a block, which is negative one behind me, that will be the same as flipping it around in 3D space. Um, because the example I showed you there is just 2D, we need this 3D. So flipping, uh, flipping directions of a vector in 3D space is the same as facing a block that is behind you in 3D space. Uh, and then uh, now we just need to make it positioned as at S. So this will move it back to where I am, regardless of how far away it is. And finally, then you just TP yourself facing that direction. So now let's go ahead and see this. You're going to see that after doing it a few times, I do converge to 90 degrees. So if I go ahead and go like this, uh, I think this is a version where I cut out stuff. Let's just do that and let's go as FP run uh, at, at S. Ooh. That's my bad. I hit full screen mode. As at P at, at S. Okay. So if I hit this, you're going to see that. I'm looking downwards, but you can see my 90 degrees, it does converge to the 90 degrees. Boys, this is an after the fact edit. I am coming to you from the future. Okay, I had to bring this up because Pen this this guy, Pucky Silver, has done it to me. <laughs> it was like 1 a.m. when I worked on this code. Uh, so the adjustment here, uh, I don't know where I'm inserting this, but what you have to do is you have to anchor to the eyes before you do all of the uh, process because when you look back at the player, you're anchored to the eyes. And that solves all of the problems associated that I discussed before uh, with um, rotations being inaccurate. So when you do this, it is perfect. This guy is facing 90 degrees, zero degrees, and I step on this and it lerps me to where I want to go. I can change this guy to any rotation and it is perfect. It was, uh, I was having some issues uh, with it being inaccurate uh, because if it's inaccurate, then uh, because it was like going from the feet outwards and then back up to the eyes. So there were some rotation inaccuracies, but yeah, that fixes it perfectly. I go to negative 37, negative 15, exactly as I wrote here. Okay. Yeah, that sums it up. So uh, in case I didn't get to talk about this before, here's the entire command. I think I went through it with you guys. Uh, the five here, you, you can reduce to make it smoother. You can uh, increase this 20 to make it smoother. You can kind of mess with the ratios, but uh, the higher the left number, uh, the closer they are to being the same, the snappier the response will be. Uh, the smaller the left number is in relation to the right, the uh, smoother it will be. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching, uh, and hopefully this was uh, injected in a reasonable spot. Anyways, that was just kind of a brief overview of, uh, or a complete overview of this one command smooth rotation. The command's in the description, the desmos is in the description. Uh, let me know if you guys thought this was useful. I thought it might be useful for a lot of things. You can do it to not just the player, you can do it to entities. Uh, I might experiment with uh, using it for homing missiles that aren't perfect. That might be a cool application. Another application would be something like a tank where the tank head kind of, you, you don't want it to be instant or some kind of entity that's targeting, right? Uh, so there's quite a few applications to this, or you could just use it for cameras on uh, a cinematic. Uh, probably the next step that I'll do in terms of trying to Minecraftify things with vector math uh, is attempting some kind of positional interpolation, but I'm not sure if it's possible. So that's kind of something to explore in the future. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.